Ladies and gentlemen, the CEO of Take Two was asked some questions in an interview regarding microtransactions. And you know, in my last video, I told you guys how I predicted, my official prediction was that NBA 2K19 was gonna see even more microtransactions than we've seen in 18. And 18 obviously had more than we've seen in 17. The trend goes on and on and on. Time and time again, 2K has proved to us priority number one is making money. Priority number two is making a good game. So as long as their priorities are set like that, it doesn't make sense for them to go out of the way to spend money to make a good game if it doesn't help them make money. You definitely don't have to go far. If you type in NBA 18 Metacritic and you just look at the Metacritic scores, without a doubt, 1.7. The game is not a 1.7 without a shadow of a doubt. Really no game is that bad. But if you scroll through the reviews of people giving it zeros, they did it in protest of obviously microtransactions. Wow, another money trap. Grow up everyone, stop buying this crap. They shove VC down your throat. It's a great game that was simply ruined by a pay to win method. Whether it's boost on the prime or on the park or on the my career, whether we're talking about you have you could buy your way to an 85 overall off jump. You have to buy your way to 85 pretty much every single player unless you want to start from a 60. Who wants to play with a 60 that doesn't even include my team pack openings, which we can all agree is gambling light. They're making so much money with this method and each year they're reporting numbers. They made more money than last year. They made more microtransactions than last year. The game sold more than last year. And so why would they mess with that formula? If they go to their investors and they're like, yo, listen, we're thinking about changing up the formula to make a good game. The investors are going to freak out like, <laughs> what do you mean? The, the stock price? Our, hey, our stock price doubled in the last year. What do you mean you're going to switch something up? <laughs> And so everybody's gonna start to freak out because the guys that are just focused on making money can't see the, they can't see the picture. See, we see the picture because we played a game and we know there's no future in a game that consistently begins to defraud. What's, what's the word I'm looking for? Any company that treats their customers like a fool will eventually be the fool. That was a fucking Instagram quote. Hey, someone tweet me that. Don't, actually, that's my tweet. Don't tweet that, that's mine. Okay, so let's get to the article. Uh, Game Informer, I don't know how they got a hold of him. I wish I could do an interview like this. I would love to sit down and just ask questions. So this is how it starts. Last year, Take Two and 2K Sports faced some backlash. Some backlash. With NBA 2K18's virtual currency plans. It said, furthermore, accusations of pay to win mechanics dogged the game as the structure allowed players to level up to 85 by just paying, which has been in the game for like four or five years now, and destroying early game competitive balance in the process. Yup, forcing literally everybody to have to do the same thing if they want to compete day one. After numerous complaints, the publisher ended up pulling back on a lot of the VC price tags on cosmetics, but the game's reputation for taking advantage of its virtual currency was set. Do you guys remember at the start of the year where haircuts were so expensive and you couldn't even see what they looked like on you or shoes were mad expensive? And literally J.R. Smith had to put out a tweet saying, yo, what's good with the prices, my guy? And then finally, Wani 2 k and 2K took action and they reduced the prices of these cosmetics. But in this in this article, they're almost making it seem like that's a W. Like that's, that, that just touches the surface. It's not even remotely a W. There's still so much more to go, but let's see where this article takes us. So this is what the CEO said. Unquestionably, we pay attention to consumer response. Mm-hmm. Because we're so focused on engaging and captivating and entertaining the and entertaining the consumer, Zelnik said. Anytime we get feedback that is anything less than 1,000% positive, we stop and say, what should we do differently? I think there's a small sliver of the consumer base that basically wants everything for free. We can't really help those people. I think most consumers just want a fair deal and we, what the f am I reading? Okay, uh, he talked about a 1,000% positive review. So let's look at the reviews. So just so you know, mostly negative is about the worst score you can get on Steam. I literally have never seen a game get mostly negative reviews on Steam. 2K, hey, buy our game. We're the best. Me, all right, since you're the only ones. Me, loses against some dude who bought VC. 2K, if you want to win, buy VC. It's just double the price of the game. Me buys VC, double the price of the game. Me loses against a rich kid who bought more VC. Me uninstalling the game. 2K, hey, 2K19 is coming out this September, and you are a nice dude. We'll give you a 10% discount because you... <laughs> 
Hey, this is not no scrub on Steam. They tell you how much hours he played. The dude played over 100 hours on NBA 2K18, and this is on the PC version. So this guy's a trooper. PC version has a lot of hackers, and 2K really doesn't do shit about the hackers on PC. I bought the game for offline, but I still have to admit, 2K is probably the only company that is greedier than EA. Like, these are all less than 1,000%. In fact, you could even say that these are... 1% reviews. Damn, everyone hates it, I guess. Evidently, I'm a boring gamer. I just play my league against AI and nothing else and think the game is absolutely awesome. Well, when the only thing you're playing is my league against the AI, you have, you have somehow, by the way, very luckily dodged all of the, what's the word? There's a word for it, for sure. I'm trying to think of the word. You have dodged all of the less than 1,000% positive things about the game. All right, let's continue to see what he said. I think most consumers just want a fair deal, and we do think that part of a fair deal is, you know, when you get the check at the end of a meal, it's not enough that the food tasted good. It had to be a fair deal for what you got. So we're very focused on it being more than a fair deal. We want to give consumers much more than they paid for it. Are we playing the same game as these guys? I know my team YouTubers who have spent 5,000 plus this year alone on the game. What are the odds they got $5,000 worth of enjoyment from the game? Fortnite was free. I may have got $5,000 worth of enjoyment from Fortnite. That game is free. Okay, so just think about this for a second. Let's say I'm the CEO and I know what we're doing is ridiculous, for sure. And somebody's asking me questions saying like, yo, people are wondering about this one issue. It's the biggest issue. This is exactly what I would say. This guy is a wordsmith of massive proportions. So what happens time and time again when you speak to Take Two or when there's interviews with people from Take Two, they talk about GTA 5 success, GTA 5 online, and how they were able to build this massive big open world and because of the recurring microtransactions that they get from that game, which by the way are almost as bad as it is on 2K, they talk about how if GTA is so successful, why can't all our games run that same exact formula and be just as successful? We do learn every time and we have to balance monetization with experience, Zelnik emphasized. In our case, we sort of all regrouped and said, wait, let's remind ourselves what we're in the business of creating the best entertainment on earth across all types of entertainment. All this stuff is gibberish. Okay, so this is where it gets interesting. We're focused on engaging and captivating consumers. If we do that right, and that's our entire focus, then revenues and profits will probably take care of themselves. So let's not overemphasize those. First of all, let's be clear, that is exactly what everybody has been saying to take two. But also, let's be clear, that is the opposite of what they're doing. If they wanted the game to come first, then they would remove boosts from the game. Why is there a 5% tax on, on games you play on the anti up? What, what could possibly be the reason for that? Why is there so much limitations on the auction house on my team? Why is there such a lack of new content? If entertainment is the main goal and that's why you're in the game, then what's happening right now? We're missing the point. It, it's like you just, they're just fluffing you up, man. I, I hope the interview hits back. He didn't, it ended. Fantastic. Ladies and gentlemen, I am not convinced. They came out with an article, maybe giving the impression that they're willing to scale back on microtransactions. But I refuse to believe that the model that's been working so well, this money-making machine that's been doing so fantastic is gonna change. I don't think it will. Why would they change it? If I was an investor and I didn't care about 2K, I'd be pissed. I'd be like, yo, make as much money as you can now because that's what my interests are as an investor or as a shareholder of the company. My prediction stands, ladies and gentlemen. Some people got optimistic in the replies to me on Twitter, like, Agent, you, you see this, bro? They said they can scale back on Mike. We're gonna have to look back at this video when the game launches, and I hope I'm wrong, bro. I'm praying I'm wrong. But so many years in a row, I held the hope that they were gonna scale back eventually, and every single year has gotten worse. This interview, what is these questions and these answers aren't enough to convince me that that trend is gonna change. It's a sad reality, really, because GTA 5 was such a fantastic product, but in so many ways, it incentivized the entire gaming industry to go down this route of egregious microtransactions, and some got away with it, 
Some most definitely didn't get away with it. But regardless, it's not good for any game. I'm a whole 2K to their word. If it's all about value, then I expect to see value in NBA 2K18. I expect to see a good product that's polished, that doesn't have massive bugs at launch. I expect to see if there are bugs, they're addressed quickly. And I expect to see new content throughout the year that's supported by the recording microtransactions that people are spending on the game. I expect to see that they're responding on Twitter the way Ronnie2k has been doing the last couple months. I expect to see that they look for the community to get feedback, not just YouTubers. Look at the casual guys, look at the hardcore guys, look at the guys in the middle. There are so many examples of devs and publishers just like killing the game, doing everything perfectly in the gaming industry. Just take some notes. And along the way, you make a ton of money, everybody's happy, well, at the, everybody's not gonna be happy. I'ma leave it on that note. Let me know what you guys think about the article. I'm a little bit hopeful, the way I'm hopeful NBA Live 19 is gonna be fantastic, but in no way am I optimistic that they're gonna somehow scale back and be all about value. For those of you who play MLB The Show, you've seen what value looks like. That's a company who's willing to scale back on microtransactions to make a better product that has more value. A lot of the times, those types of games aren't truly appreciated. So we'll leave it on that. If you enjoyed the video, drop a like, subscribe. Now, there's two videos on the screen. If you haven't watched one of them, click it right now. Man, if you haven't clicked it, bro, we're gonna send... Good, it's great.